The Redmi Note 12 Explorer Edition is just Xiaomi going all out with the Redmi brand. The key selling points for this phone are the 200 megapixel camera and the 210 watt charging speeds. But you know what? It still doesn't make sense to buy this particular Redmi Note 12 phone. And I'll tell you why in the end of the video. So stay tuned with me. If you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad. You're watching Track It English. Let's go. Let's charge with the marquee feature, the 210 watt charging speeds, which makes it the fastest charging Xiaomi phone yet. And Xiaomi claims that this phone can charge from 0 to 100 in 9 minutes. So I ran a charging test but I did a real world charging test. In our test, the screen was on and off intermittently because I had to check the battery percentage and the Wi-Fi was also on. So I charged from 1% to 100% and it took me 16 minutes and 41 seconds to actually charge the phone. At around the nine minute mark, we had reached the 65%. Obviously our result is much higher than what Xiaomi claims, but it is a very, very real world scenario that we're talking about. If you want to achieve the nine minute charging speed that Xiaomi claims, you will have to keep your screen switched off. You will have to keep uh, your Wi-Fi switched off. You'll also have to keep it in a controlled uh, temperature environment. Basically, we were at the top end of how much time it will take to charge this specific Xiaomi Redmi Note 12 Explorer Edition. You can safely assume that it'll take anywhere between 9 to 20 minutes for a full charge. In fact, I saw the Tech Bar video as well and they managed to charge their phone from 2% to 100% in about 13 minutes and 52 seconds. So yeah, you can see the difference out here. See, all you need to know is that you get blazing fast charging speeds. Even 16 minutes or 20 minutes is absolutely fine. And I'm not really a fan of their super fast charging speeds. So this is good enough for me. So coming to that 200 megapixel camera, it uses the Samsung ISOCELL HPX sensor, which is made specifically for mid-range phones. And it's a pared down version of the HP1 inside the Motorola H30 Ultra. Essentially, the HP1 has a larger sensor size and bigger pixels too. Anyway, the rest of the setup includes your bare basic 8 megapixel ultra wide, 2 megapixel macro, and a 16 megapixel selfie camera. All of which offer average pictures to say the least. Macro camera shots, I don't really like them. The ultra wide angle camera, there is no color science consistency. The selfie camera is all right at best. So the only other 200 megapixel you know, camera that I had with me was the Motorola H30 Ultra. But remember that this phone costs three times the price of this one. Now, before we move on, if you like the kind of content that we make, do hit that subscribe button and maybe even comment below for the sake of the YouTube algorithm. You know, I can't resist a camera comparison. So I did a 200 megapixel shootout. And what I noticed is that in the pixel bin 12.5 megapixel samples, the Redmi phone actually had natural details compared to the slightly over sharpened look of the Motorola H30 Ultra. Colors are pretty neutral on the Motorola though. Uh, Xiaomi has a more of a warm look which makes a skin tone look good. Now where the Redmi Note 12 Explorer falters is in multi-stack processing and that's because the MediaTek Dimensity 1080's ISP is not going to be as good as the ISP used in the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. So when you're shooting HDR pictures, the images are oversaturated and low light night mode shots, of course, don't have as much details or texture that you can retrieve uh, from the Motorola H30 Ultra. I also checked out the 200 megapixel high res samples. And what I noticed is that Xiaomi took 200 megapixel pictures in an instant compared to the Motorola H30 Ultra. But I must say that the quality is way better. The details are way sharper on the Motorola H30 Ultra trust 200 megapixel sample. Also, if you're wondering, the H30 Ultra's file sizes are much larger compared to the Redmi Note 12 Explorer. We're done with that comparison, but one point I want to make about the camera setup on this phone is that you now get 4K 30 FPS video recording, which wasn't available on the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus. So that is a huge sigh of relief. So when it comes to overall camera performance, I think that the 200 megapixel is just a number and it's an okay average camera at best. Now let's talk about the MediaTek Dimensity 1080 inside the phone. And this is a decidedly mid-range chipset. The performance of this chipset lies squarely between that of the Dimensity 920 and the Snapdragon 778G. The 778G is more powerful. Benchmark scores on Antutu and Geekbench are higher on the Snapdragon 778G compared to the Dimensity 1080. 
and the COD Mobile graphics setting is also better. See, the Dimensity 1080 is a capable mid-range chip, but don't expect it to be a gaming monster or anything. In the past few generations of Redmi Note series phones, what I've noticed is that Xiaomi picks SOCs for making an overall balanced phone and not necessarily a performance monster. By the way, you get UFS 2.2 storage type, which is good, which is fast as well. And what I noticed in regular usage is that if you're not gaming, the phone's performance is very good. The UI itself is fast fast and responsive and couple that with the 120Hz refresh rate which is tuned very well, you get very smooth performance on this phone. Now talking about the design, I do like the upgraded design on the Redmi Note 12 Explorer. You get a matte finish aluminum railing on the side and you get glass on the back and the front as well. That said, this black variant of the phone is extremely glossy, extremely reflective and a huge fingerprint magnet. You know what, I'm gonna have a lot of fun watching my videographer struggle to take P-rolls for this phone. Now the in-hand feel of the phone itself is very premium, but the camera module juts out a lot from the rear. So if you're placing it on a flat surface, it's gonna be uneven and of course, table wobble. Anyway, about the hardware setup, I love the fact that Xiaomi hasn't removed the headphone jack nor the infrared scanner either. But wait, there's one feature missing and that is the memory card slot. You do get a dual SIM card slot, but no memory card slot. And that's a feature that's missing on a lot of Android phones. And I think that's not a good trend. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, while I do like the design of the phone, I love the display of this phone. You get a 6.67 inch 10 bit OLED panel with 120 Hz refresh rate and 900 nits of peak brightness and support for Dolby Vision and HDR10+. It gets really bright outdoors and the peak brightness in HDR videos is also very good. Now, I did test out a couple of Dolby Vision shows on Netflix on this display itself. It's rich and vibrant, no doubt, but I feel that the skin tones veer towards red and the HDR tuning is not done very well. That said, the stereo speakers are very good. You've got support for Dolby Atmos and the left-right channel balance is pretty decent. Actually, why don't you take a listen for yourself and let me know what you think. By the way, the display also has an X-axis vibration motor. It's pretty decent. It's not the best, but it works well. I think that O-Haptics on the Realme 9 Pro Plus is definitely better. And apart from that, you also do get a fingerprint scanner that is attached to the power button. Yes, there's no in-display fingerprint scanner, but it's a fast fingerprint scanner, so it doesn't really matter. It's very fast at unlocking, so I don't really care about it much. Now, what I'm not a fan of on this phone is that you get MIUI 13, yes, but you get it with Android 12. And Android 13 is out there. I think that all phones that come out now should come with Android 13. That's not there on this phone. Regardless, you can expect a couple of years of update, which means that you should get Android 13 and maybe even Android 14. But yeah, I mean, that's something that Xiaomi doesn't care about too much. I have not seen MIUI 14 with Android 13 yet, so I don't know what's gonna be the state of this one. That said, MIUI 13 continues to be very feature rich. There are a lot of customization options available for you. And now, since this is the Chinese variant of the phone that we tested, there are a lot of bloatware apps as well. I'm sure that Xiaomi won't bundle so many bloatware apps uh, when it launches in India. So you like the Redmi Note 12 Explorer Edition, you think this is the best Redmi Note phone yet? What if I told you you could get all the features that's available on this phone for cheaper and all you'll need to sacrifice is that fast charging speed? Yeah, I'm talking about the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus. That phone comes with a larger 5000 mAh battery, so the battery life will be better, and 120 watt fast charging speeds. I'm okay with 120 watt. Why do you need 210 watt? And it's cheaper as well. It's at least 5000 rupees cheaper in China. Why wouldn't you want to pick that phone instead of this one? Anyway, I'm just glad that Xiaomi made worthy upgrades to the Redmi Note series. I wasn't a fan of the Redmi Note 11 series. The Note 12 series seems to be a back to form sort of thing for this company. What do you folks think of this phone? Let me know in the comments section below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? I'd love to know your take. Until next time, this is Ashad signing off. Keep tracking and stay safe.